this lesson is about the growth structure of the lungs. Just to note about the blood vessels and the heart structure that I never said last time. Um, so the natural resting heart rate is controlled by a group of cells in the right atrium that act as a pacemaker and they're called pacemaker cells. So an artificial pacemaker just does the same job really as these um, pacemaker cells that we have. So if our pacemaker cells for whatever reason don't work as well as they should, you can have an artificial pacemaker fitted which sends electrical signals out to correct any irregularities in the heartbeat. So now going on to gas exchange in humans. So we're going to look at the structure of the breathing system and how air moves in and out of the breathing system. So here is the breathing system. So at the top, you've got your voice box, which is known as the larynx. Number two is rings of cartilage. Three is the trachea. Four is a bronchus or pleural bronchi. Five is bronchioles. Six is alveoli. Seven, that's a diaphragm. Eight is not strictly part of the breathing system, but it's the heart. Nine is just telling you which lung it is. So you have to imagine that you are the diagram. So that is the right lung. 10 is the pleural membranes. 11 is intercostal muscles. 12 is all this fluid that surrounds the lung, which is called pleural fluid. And number 13 is the rib. So let's go through that again. You've got the larynx, which is another word for the voice box. You've got the cartilage rings, the trachea, bronchus, then they divide into even smaller tubes called bronchioles, and then they end up in tiny little air sacs called alveola, alveoli, or one is alveolus. The um, skin that separates the thorax from the abdomen is co called, well, the membrane, is called the diaphragm. Number eight is the heart. Number nine is the right lung. Number 10 is the pleural membranes. Number 11 is the intercostal muscles. Number 12 is the pleural fluid. And number 13 is the rib. So just a bit about the functions of each. So the cartilage rings keep the airways open. They're a strong material which stops the airways from closing. The trachea is lined by ciliated epithelial cells, which have cilia on, and they have mucus, produce mucus, which traps any dirt and bacteria, and then the cilia will waft the mucus up and out of the airways to stop, or hopefully prevent as much as possible the lungs getting infected. Then the trachea divides into even smaller tubes called, well, two tubes called bronchi. The bronchi then divide into smaller tubes called bronchioles and then they, these end up in tiny little air sacs which are called alveoli and these are the surface for gas exchange. They have a very large surface area and they have a great white structure which increases the surface area as well. The diaphragm is a membrane that can uh, move up and down to aid with breathing. The pleural membranes keep contain the pleural fluid. Pleural fluid is just there to prevent friction between the ribs and the lungs when you breathe in and out. The intercostal muscles help to move the rib cage up and out or down and in so that you can breathe in and out. So the lungs are found in the thorax, which is the chest area here, and they are surrounded by a rib cage, and they also have a diaphragm, which is a sheet which a sheet of muscle which separates the thorax from the abdomen. And it's these movements of the diaphragm and the rib cage which cause ventilation, cause the air to move in and out. So breathing 
in is also known as inspiration. So the intercostal intercostal muscles contract, which pulls the ribs up and out. The diaphragm contracts and flattens. And because the ribs have moved up and out and the diaphragm's flattened, the volume inside the thorax increases. And because the volume's increased, it's got bigger, the pressure decreases um, to less than atmospheric, so therefore air will rush in. Breathing out is the opposite, so the intercostal muscles will relax. The ribs will therefore move down and in. The diaphragm relaxes and pings back up to its dome position. And because the ribs have moved down and in and the diaphragm is domed back up again, the volume inside the thorax has decreased. So if the volume decreases, that increases the pressure inside the thorax and it forces the air out of the lungs. So because of this ventilation mechanism, it means that we're constantly bringing fresh oxygen into the lungs and getting rid of carbon dioxide from the lungs. So you will have a lot of capillaries which circulate the alveoli, which will bring blood to the lungs, which are full of carbon dioxide, and it will collect oxygen. So it will give the carbon dioxide back to the lungs from the blood, and the blood will collect fresh oxygen from the alveoli. So just to go through that again, when you breathe, in the rib cage moves up and out because the intercostal muscles contract the diaphragm contracts and flattens so the fact that the ribs have moved up and out and the diaphragm has flattened means that the volume inside the thorax has increased so because the volume is increased that means the pressure has decreased to below atmospheric so air rushes in with expiration, the opposite happens, so the intercostal muscles relax, so therefore the ribs drop down and in. The diaphragm also relaxes and goes back to its dome position. So because the ribs have moved down and in, and the diaphragm has gone up to its dome position, the volume of the lungs decreases, therefore the pressure increases to above atmospheric and therefore air rushes out of the lungs and that's breathing out. So just to look at the composition of air breathed in and out. So nitrogen, we breathe it in and out, but we don't use any of it. So 80% is breathed in and 80% is breathed out. With oxygen, we breathe in 20%, but we breathe out 16%. So we're actually keeping 4% of that oxygen. Carbon dioxide, we breathe in 0.04%, but we get out, we give out 4%. So we're giving out more carbon dioxide than what we take in. So that's a quick summary of the lung structure and breathing in and out.